I'm Robert Scoble, and uh, for Small Teams Big Impacts, we're here in London, England. Yay, go Olympics. We're here at the Rackspace office seeing a bunch of cool startups. And Byzantra is a company that does a work suite that lets you look at finance and uh, contacts and other things and wrap it all together in a cloud-based system that will help you work better. And we're going to see it right now. Who are you? Yeah, I'm Bradley Starr. Um, I'm the chief executive of Byzantro, which is a new business that we launched last year. Um, my background is I've always inhabited that strange space between business technology and marketing, and that marketing guys think I'm a tech guy, and the tech guys think I'm a marketing guy, and I, I kind of journey. So you're confused. Two. So I'm confused, and I tend to confuse most of the people that I work with as well. So. Uh, you're, you're doing a work suite. Tell me what you're seeing happen in work and how you guys fit, fit into this. Well, what we're seeing uh, now is the, the big upsurge in uh, startup businesses and small businesses. And our belief, particularly as I, I came out of an original small business area and then became part of a large multinational, then have gone back to small business, is because of the low cost of setting up a small business, the way that you can network with other small businesses, you don't need to build everything in-house. That gives the power to small companies that originally only big companies could have. So that's the area that we love working in. Yeah, tell me, take me through the suite and tell me what it lets a small business do. Okay, well the suite was set up really to provide all the basic tools for a small business or a startup. We do a lot of our work with, with startups. So in one turn on and go system, we brought together the foundations of finance, contact management, document sharing, basic project management, employee record keeping, and it instantly networks the team together. And we also made it work online and offline because not everybody has ubiquitous access to the internet wherever they are. And we, d we didn't believe that with so much of your infrastructure in place, that your business has to grind to a halt if you lose your internet connection. Yeah, you guys are here in London and you have the subway, you don't have Wi-Fi all the time in the subway, right? That, that's right, although, um, especially for the Olympic Games, they've just started putting Wi-Fi in a lot of the stations, but you certainly don't get it while you're traveling between stops. Yeah, and yeah. work doesn't stop in the subway, does it? No, work doesn't <laughs> stop. There's more and more people either on these big phones now, the notes and uh, laptops are out and people are working between meetings, you know, that make use of the downtime. Now this, this space is a very competitive space. You have everything from social work uh, services like Yammer or Salesforce Chatter on one side, all the way out to full blown business suites, I guess like Zoho. So uh, how do you differentiate yourself and how do you get noticed in this space? Well, the, the differentiation is where uh, we're really working on the basis that a lot of people who start small businesses are passionate about what they do, but actually don't have a lot of the business experience. So we're saying, don't get the complicated stuff, get the essentials in place, look after your cash, do the basic follow-ups with your customers, whether you're trying to get a sale or you're trying to get the next sale, keep your records straight, put the documents where you can share them, and it gives you a lot more efficient use of your time. And, and this is only based on my personal experience. You can be disorganized and waste a lot of time, or you think getting organized is an overhead, but actually you get, get a lot more done, particularly if you could share it with a team totally effortlessly. So uh, our, our positioning was, these are the basics, it'll get you going. Um, our customer support that we do, interestingly, is we thought a lot of the requests would be technical, but over half are about business questions. People want tax advice. They want to know, how do I set up a project? How can I follow up with my customers better? And that, that was a surprise, but also puts us in a slightly different place to a pure technology yeah, offering. So you, uh, you have a service component to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, but we, something that yeah, we, likes. Yeah, exactly, and, and we include that in a, a monthly rental, and, and we're actually just bringing the cost down to make it easier for small businesses to get in at the beginning, particularly as we're getting interest from developing markets now. T take me through the, the the suite and give me a tour. What, what what would a new user need to know about this new way to work? Because maybe they use Microsoft Office with Excel sure. and PowerPoint and... The first thing uh, that people get when they turn it on is a dashboard. And the purpose really of any business dashboard that's productive is it's got to help you do things 
uh, and bring to your attention information that otherwise you might miss. So although you wouldn't buy this system or subscribe to it just for tasks, we put your tasks in a dashboard widget and also the tasks that are coming from spaces that you're sharing with people. So in one consolidated place, you can break things down to what's going on for a client project, what's the stuff I've got to do from home, what are my own business things. And also you can consolidate different calendars people use and you see those. If somebody uploads a document, instead of them having to send you an email each time saying, I've uploaded a document or um, here it is and you lose it after three weeks, you get a notification. So we're trying to cut the email traffic and you can click straight through to it. Cool. Um, you, you also have a, a simple finance dashboard. So without asking for any information, whether you're entering your own invoices or if you've got a bookkeeper or your accountant is either working in your office or maybe even from home, then you're seeing your sales and you're seeing how they're popping up during the month and you're seeing what the trend is from a simple list, no colored charts over the last six months of your costs. But importantly, as we all know, you've got to keep the cash coming in. Your debtors list is right there. So it's these basic elements we put in the dashboard and then you drill down. And a big part of our focus is making it really easy to do that stuff. You want to get an invoice out, enter the numbers, it's got your basic information, put the bank details on so people can pay you electronically by default and just those simple things that make life a little easier for people. Very cool, I, I need to get some invoices out for something <laughs> I did too, so um, this is really a cool suite. Yeah. Tell me what, you know, we're here in London and uh, what's happening in the world here? What's it like being an entrep entrepreneur building a company here? Uh, what's, what's happening in London? Well, I mean, London's a busy place right now. I mean, it's, we've always looked jealously on the, the US because the stories that come across are the startups, the whole Silicon Valley culture, and you can go out and you can raise your money and get going. Of course, although we look jealously upon it, the actual information, of course, is that very few startups get venture funded. They're either people's savings or you're maxing your credit cards. And there's, yeah. there's a lot of people now starting s small businesses, trying that American culture, I think, has arrived in that it's okay to get things under your own control. So what we're seeing is that a lot of people either needs must, graduates coming out of universities can't get a job, but they're bright, and if there's an easy way of getting going, and there's a lot of government initiatives, and of course all of the uh, publicity behind Silicon Roundabout, which although it's not big in national terms, is really galvanizing people, uh, and Startup Britain, which is attracting people's attention as well. People are saying, I can try stuff. I can do that from my bedroom. It doesn't cost much. Let's give it a go. So that, that's a whole lot more exciting. And people are getting together and forming views and saying, actually, I don't need to spend a lot. I'll give it a try. But also, you've got a, a totally different demographic that we're seeing as well, which is the slightly more gray-haired group, you know, 40 or 50 plus for two reasons. One, they're either been made redundant, yep. businesses have cut back, so needs must, they've, they've got to do something, so they're working from home. And they're discovering, in common with another group there, that actually it may be a slightly better life than that daily commute. Now, you know, for 60 or 70% of my previous salary, I'll work locally. So you're getting this kind of local, sustainable thing going on. So whilst there's the newspapers and the media are doom and gloom, there's a lot of excitement with that change yep. that's going on simply because the technology's enabled it now and there's the mindset's following. So I'm a permanent optimist. I think it's for all the doom and gloom and the worry about Europe, it's, there's some exciting stuff going on. Very cool. T tell me about the infrastructure you're on and how that's changed uh, you know, as you've built businesses over the years. Okay, well my last business was a, a database marketing company and we grew it from a dingy basement in North London to this international operation and had the clients, you know, people you know well, at Microsoft and Dell's. But we, when my business partner is still one of my best friends in that business, we started, we had to put both our houses on the line to get the bank loan just to pay for the computer. You know, and that, that's where we started. And the, the enormous amount of money that we put on the line to add to the computer capacity that we needed in those days were just crazy risks. I mean, I'm glad I wasn't married and had no kids at that time because you, you, you just couldn't do that kind of thing. Uh, and of course, we had the problem. I think in that business, there were at least three times we thought we were going bust. And we got killed by the fixed overheads. The least costs on the computers were always the biggest than the offices. Yep. And of course, the big change now 
is you can rent this industrial strength computer capacity from Rackspace, who, who we're using, uh, and it's almost more robust than anything we built because there's a bigger support staff, and we just buy it as we need it, and that's, that's fantastic. And not only for us, but we can say to all our users, the reason we can guarantee the service is because this is where it sits. Yep. So we're, we're, we're kind of disaster recovered from that. And of course, serviced offices, people far more networked, people hardly ever spending time in the office. It's just a, enables you to get into business for a, a lot less money and your risk is not there and it's actually a better service. No, that's, that's really cool. It's fun seeing businesses like yours pop up all over the world, so congratulations. Yeah, yeah no, thank you. I mean, I'm doing it and the, the team that works on it, we do it because we're enjoying it. You know, and, and uh, but it's still possible. You, you still have that dream that says we can start this little thing and we can do that rock and roll thing, and maybe just it's going to go big and we're going to change the world. And that's that's always a cool thing to do. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, www.bizantra.com. And so. spell that because it's a it's a weird uh, URL. Okay, b i z a n t r a dot com. Very cool. Thank you so much, Robert. It's a real pleasure meeting you. Mm -hmm.